Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. If you would like to support the show, head on over to audibletrial.com backslash TMP to get your free audiobook download and 30 day trial at audibletrial.com backslash TMP. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from. You can listen to them on your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player. Make sure you sign up on the computer so that we get credit. We get a kickback for everyone who signs up for a free trial at audibletrial.com backslash TMP. You are now listening to the Mythesis Podcast, your portal to the paranormal, streaming live at mythesis.me. Your hub for all things spiritual, esoteric, and paranormal. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. This show is designed to awaken your higher conscious state, to talk about some of the um, esoteric things going on in the world and things that's going on in people's lives that we can really have a medium for a place for everybody to come together and put all their ideas and their pieces of the puzzle on the table and see if we can make a picture out of it. I'm your host, True Seeker, and I believe we have on the line my co-host, uh, Anthony Graham. You there? Yes, sir. I'm here. How's it going, brother? It's going real good, man. How you doing? Good, man. It's um, awesome to have you on board and your first show, hanging in there with me and helping me do this show tonight, man. Glad to have you on board. Thanks for having me, bro. Good stuff. Tonight, we're going to be talking with Ed Grimsley. He's got some amazing videos. I first seen him on YouTube, seen some of his videos and seen some of his lectures and some really nice stuff he has captured from different anomalies in the sky and different aerial vehicles he's seen, UFOs flying in formation, stopping on a dime, doing all types of different aerial phenomena. So, you know, we're going to bring him on. So without further ado, from California, we got Ed Grimsley. You there? Yeah, how you doing, guys? Doing good. You're ready. You're ready to yeah. go, huh? Oh yeah, we're ready, man. We're ready okay. to get into it, man. We got a lot to talk let's, about. Let's get some truth going here. Yeah, definitely. Well, like I said, I first seen some of your videos online, YouTube, and actually on your website and stuff. And once I was checking out your stuff and trying to find more about you, I was listening to Coast to Coast, and I heard George Nori tell a story. And he talked about he was doing some speaking engagements, and he said there was a man, a mysterious man, standing in the room watching him. And um, it, I think he said you came to like two different lectures or whatever, and finally you came up to him and said, "Hey, George, I can show you right now UFOs in the sky." And he said that you took him outside uh, on the balcony or on the roof, and you used the night vision goggles and showed him. He said, "Sure enough." He seen two craft that he had no idea what it was, and it, they were doing maneuvers that um, airplanes and satellites do not do. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, he uh, he and about thirty people came up on the roof of in Santa Clara area, and uh, I was showing people a lot of craft and a lot of things going. And so we sent some people down to grab him and get him up there. And there was still four craft still going on. And we were sharing, I think, four or five pair of goggles around. And uh, I pointed out a couple to him and showed him. And and this one that was he was looking at just came to a complete stop. And George said, where'd it go? And I said, well, it's still right there. But it just stopped. And it's playing like it's a star. And he says, that is amazing. And then we looked and looked, and then he saw some other stuff. Saw a couple of things zooming around up there real high out. And, and uh, there's different things. Patrol craft, uh, there's craft that are on patrol, there's mother ships, there's all kinds of things out there. And there's satellites too, and there's bugs and moths, but easy enough to tell the difference. Mm-hmm. So in turn, George was looking around, and he had the glasses off to Tommy or somebody else, and just then this other craft started to move. I said, George, George, it's leaving here. 
and I handed him mine and pointed the laser up, and it was leaving. And he goes, well, what was it? Where did it go? He said it was there, and then it just disappeared. And I just saw it standing there, playing like a star after you saw it stop, and then it just took off. And then after it was going real fast, it just closed and went whoop and blinked out. And he, he was like, <laughs> his world was rocked because he'd heard about things, but when I was showing them to him, it definitely, it definitely put him in a new state of mind. Yeah, there's some amazing footage you have there, man. A lot of people have actually been filming using night vision goggles and stuff and I tell you what you're capturing stuff with those goggles that you can't see with the naked eye there's um, a lot going what it, on what's some of That's the uh, like the uh, biggest objects you've seen out there are, they, are, are some of the objects pretty big are they are they usually just lights or what what are you really seeing a lot of well I've seen several craft maneuvering circling battling firing beams blowing each other up I've seen that a number of times, and I've seen like three come in fairly close to me one night and do a big horseshoe pattern around me like as if they were on parade, and uh, that was awesome, but I've just seen so many different things. There's things out there that are football shaped, there's things that are uh, delta shaped, there's things that look like a Concord jet or a V-1B bomber and they're flying up in the edge of space or in space and they can accelerate and just fly out of sight just from that width and mm-hmm. they can really battle they can really really battle you know what I would wow. do for a ride in one and okay. I've seen many times I've seen them blow one another up Usually, uh, when it's a battle with the Deltas, the other ones get hammered, but other times, the disc-shaped or saucer-shaped ones that go at it with each other sometimes, it's hard to tell who's who, but they usually blow one another up, and sometimes you'll see a rescue capsule come out, blinking. Mm. In a few in a few minutes, and the other craft is gone that blew it up, and they'll be blinking and having a strange strobe light, like some of the military craft have, hmm. and they'll float along in space, just drifting at whatever speed they got hit at, and about half the time you'll see another craft come up, circle it and then another craft come and fly patrol around it and it'll move in and pick that capsule up and then fly it away. One one Mm. night we saw... Wow. One night we saw one get blown up and about a minute later here's the strobe light floating across and then about five minutes later here is a single craft coming from one direction, flying in really fast and flowing up and turning right near the, the damaged craft, the capsule, and then two more coming from another direction, and they split apart. One flew one side of the circle, and the other flew the other side of the circle like a protection, and the one that's been first made contact and picked up the capsule then it turned and started heading out and the one circle broke and went front one behind I expected and I watched them fly out and they flew out a nice street course heading right out towards the moon it was shown to the moon and they were getting smaller and smaller going towards the Mm. So not only are you seeing a uh, craft, you know, not only are you seeing craft, you're actually seeing uh, these things shoot at each other, correct? Oh, yeah, they, they battle. Not always, but yeah. um, it's quite, 
is quite often you see it, and sometimes it takes place so fast that if you blink, you're going to miss it. But you're going to find out that a lot of times when you're looking in the sky at night, you'll see something like a flashbulb go off way out there. Mm -hmm. And when I have been looking and doing that, I think it the craft getting blown up quite a ways out and you in the flash and the explosion and it's so far out it's like 500 miles or 700 miles out and you're not getting to see the size of the craft and that just like you would if you were 250 miles out so mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people that have come and see it and uh I've probably had a thousand or better people that's actually seen battles that have come out and been with me when they take place to see them. And uh, there's another thing that happens. Uh, there's a fleet of usually three to five very big craft, and they'll come in from deep space, and they'll come in, and they'll be descending down. And if you pick up on them, you'll see that they are in a safe pattern, like so that they can't get all that taken out. Usually mm -hmm. three lower and one on each side up higher. It's like a high guard, like a patrol. Mm -hmm. If somebody's in on them. And in turn, usually you see them dropping down about two, three hundred miles off the coast or in the ocean. And then we've seen them down by San Diego coming in and dropping down for to see a Cortez in Mexico. And uh, I've been out on ocean liner cruise ships and showing people all we're out in the middle of the ocean. And they've seen three in the lead and two high guards. That happened not too long ago aboard uh, the Liberty ship going down towards the uh, Mayan rooms down into the South Caribbean there. I, I think that the human race thinks more of itself than what it should because often they think that we're the superior thing here and there's so much out there going on and so much galaxies. If they just look through the glasses one time they would see how much potential there is out there because you don't see hardly any stars compared to what you could see through the high-tech goggles. And if you get too cheap of goggles, you don't see very good, and and you're going to miss out on a lot. Excuse me. Uh, that reminds me a lot of our camping trip, man. You think that the flashes that he's describing may have been what we've seen? Could have been. Could have been. Yeah, I've seen a lot of flashes, yeah. If you're looking up and you'll see something that looks like a flashbulb went off way out there in space, mm -hmm. that's somebody hammering somebody. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen some of those flashes and then looked them over and checked them out with some 10 power magnification night vision. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see this wow. code button come on, and you can see craft come in later to pick it up. Wow. Yeah. So let me ask you this. I think the next question is, you know, I, I, you know, I don't think there's a question about if there are craft up there. People are seeing them. There's countless numbers of videos. People seeing them for themselves. Um, I don't think it's a question if they're there. They're definitely there. Who or what is manning these craft, in your opinion? Well, I believe, you see, back in Alexander the Great's day, you know, a couple thousand years ago, they reported battles going on over over their battlefield. And the, these chariots were firing lightning like at each other, and I believe that there's always been more than mm -hmm. one out there, and that one may be protecting mankind mm -hmm. or 
be possession of mankind, mm-hmm. us, and another may want to come in to help us or mm-hmm. take over control. And I think that's the battling going on there. Or mm-hmm. it could be just a good old good and evil battling it out. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of the spoils. I know that there was a um, a prophecy by Edgar Casey, which he said that the Battle of Armageddon would be fought in the sky, would be fought in outer space. Uh huh. And then here, and then here you are, you know, getting footage of these different ships, and and seeing these anomalies of these ship and craft shooting laser beams at each other, blowing up and things. You know, it's amazing, man. The seeing is believing. If you try to tell somebody, you know, it's kind of like the old saying, "I can show you better than I can tell you." So you may not yeah. believe me, but whenever you put these goggles on or you check out the footage for yourself, see, it's totally different experiencing a craft, having a craft come down, and seeing something than you know so, taking somebody's story for it. Yeah, well, you know, the things I tell people about when I was 16 and saw all the battles going on in the Sierras above my hunting camp and waking up my dad, my mom all the camping and hunting friends around us and showing them. And, you know, after an hour and a half of them watching this stuff go on, most people go, hmm, oh, well, and back to sleep. I laid up all night and watched until daylight the next morning. And I counted counted over 45 craft blowing each other up. I don't know who was who. But my dad had a good answer for me. He says, well, I'm going to go back to the tent and go to bed. I says, how can you do that? This might be the end of the world or Armageddon or whatever it is. Well, if we're still here in the morning, I'll wake up. And if we're not, I won't wake up. Mm-hmm. And, and then he says, they're, they're, they're rattling up there. And he says, well, I don't know what they're fighting about. I don't know who's fighting who. I don't know what they're fighting about. And he says, I don't know whose side I'd be on. And my 270 gear rifle wouldn't reach him. So he says, I'm going to mm-hmm. go get some sleep. And if there's a tomorrow, there's a tomorrow. And if there's not, I won't know. <laughs> and he says, but you're going to town to get supplies with me. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. So I told him, I said, I'll sleep on the way to town. Okay. And so we so were let me to get out by Weber Lake, and we went into town. And when we talked to the military, the first guy said, oh, yeah, there's been a lot of calls on that. And then he pushed my dad through. And the next guy just gave my dad a bad time, tried to make him think he was crazy. And my dad told the guy to go to hell. And you're on awesome. my diet. <laughs> awesome. And the guy says, you can't tell me to go to hell. And my dad says, what do you mean I can't? You're wrong. I just told you to. He says, I'll tell you again. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. Hey, check it out. What what kind of NVDs were you guys using? I mean, there's different types of uh, night vision devices. What what type were you guys using to see the craft? Well, there's several pairs and kinds that'll work. Usually you have to have a high generation, like at least a 2 plus or a 3. And if somebody tries to sell you a 4 plus, watch out because... They only made Generation 4s for a while, special ones, and they had a lot of trouble with them. And so they're not making them, but a lot of people are saying, oh, here's 4, but it's actually a 3 plus or a pedicle grade. And they're a little clearer, a little better, but the Gen 3s and some Gen 2 high performance, as you can see, it. But everybody and their brother wants you to buy a $4,000 pair from them and get their company to sell it to you. And then they tell you things like, oh, yeah, Ed Grimsley buys his goggles from us. Mm. You know, you know, lie, lie, yeah. lie. You know? But companies are getting rich off of what I've told people because I'm the one that started all this night vision goggle stuff and UFO work. They call me the guru or god or godfather of night vision UFOs, yeah. and it's kind of true. But it, it's like I had one guy call me one time, and he says, "Well, you're not the first one to 
see these craft. I've seen them. And I said, well, why didn't you tell them about it? He said, it was a long, a long time ago. A long time ago. And he says, I could see them battling. And I says, okay, well, how long ago was it? Well, when he says he could see them, the only Gen glasses was available was some of the first military Gen 1s. And if you used a pair of those and looked up, you're lucky to see... Uh, he, part. Yeah, funny face. Well, he, he was just sitting there lying, trying to tell me this, and, and uh, then when I told him about how you can't see those with that model or that design, oh well, uh, yeah, well I think it was something like that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, I, I'm kind of strange, but you know, I'm a little bit crazy because it helps. Yeah. And but I'm truthful about it, and I'm trying to warn the world that we're being uh, taken over, we're being maneuvered, manipulated, and over-controlled, and it's coming from all levels of our government, from the city, to the counties, the state, and the federal, and mm-hmm. that they're lying to us and manipulating us, and it's not just our humans. There are, there was a- alien and Nazi for her statement going on with Hitler in World War II, and together they were going to take over the world. Share it, whatever. Well, Germany lost the war, but the Nazis kept going. And their scientists mm-hmm. came over to America. Some of the scientists went to Russia. So now you got Russian Nazi, American Nazi, and they came into power, and space programs, scientific programs, and that, and then they started running it, started getting involved. And then now there's infiltration in our Congress and our Senate of outside sources because one seven vote no in Congress and Senate vote no, 10, and the rest vote to take our right away to grow our own food you got to know that's a crock of crap, and if they're not for us, and if they're trying mm-hmm. to uh, get easier for Masanto and their big brothers to grow seed and food, yeah. and if they stop you from having food, you're going to say, well, hey, hey, you know, I, I'm hungry. Here's the service say, well, give us your guns, and, and, and become one of our patriots here, and if you join us, we'll let you have food. And uh, yeah. the FEMA trains, the FEMA camps, all the underground mm-hmm. facilities that they've dug and built. I mean, you look up people like Phil Snyder, working 17 years doing underground, has a shootout with some graves underground. And then yeah. he tells the truth and worst case of suicide, you know, hanging himself, shooting himself, and dabbing and all that stuff. I mean, it, yeah, he ended up he ended up passing away in some some mysterious death, didn't he? The guy who came out with a lot of information on that. Yeah, well, he got he got murdered. Mhm. Okay. They, they hung him, well, they hung him, shot him, and stabbed him. Yeah. Brutal suicide. Leaking information. Well, you know, at least that's what they said. Look here, Ed. I want to open it up now to uh-huh. um, just let everybody know the reason we started this show was to really uh, put the information out there for other people who you know, have questions who are seeing craft and, and going through these experiences, but they don't have nobody to talk to. They can listen to the podcast. They can call in with their questions, things like that, you know. So if anybody have, has any questions, if you want to ask Ed any questions or anybody on on the panel, the number to call in is 724-444-7444. You'll enter PIN number 78643, push pound. And then, uh, well, actually, that's the call ID. Then the PIN number is one and then pound. And with that being said, we have a guest in the room I actually want to bring in on the line. This was when I first started seeing craft and having sightings from myself. It was about three years ago now. So it's been about three years, and when I was going through it, there was a lot of questions and things that I had and not really many people I can talk to. I tried to talk to close friends, and then they wouldn't answer my phone calls later. And only thing I had was the Internet and Facebook and, and things like that, trying to reach out to people. And there was a guy that I met online 
uh, because I think I connected him with one of your videos. I, I ran into him, whether it was through Facebook or, or whatnot. Anyway, his name's Eric. And uh, I actually reached out to him about three years ago, and he actually accepted my call. And me and him talked, and he was able to say, hey, I've, I've been seeing these things too. Don't worry. You know, you can, you know, if you need somebody to talk to, I'm here. So I believe we have him on the line. Eric, are you there? I'm here. How you, how you doing, brother? Eric, how you doing? Hey, Mr. Grimsley uh, and Derek, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, and I, I just wanted to say, Mr. Grimsley, I appreciate you exposing, you know, the world to this reality. Um, you know, as Derek said, uh, I was exposed to you uh, via Coast to Coast. And it, it piqued my curiosity. And I, I thought to myself, you know, there's got to be something here to it. Um, later, I decided to take the plunge and invest in the Generation 3 uh, night vision goggles. And I actually went on online, and there was a phone number. And I called the phone number, and this, this man, <laughs> man answered, and he was, you know, disheveled. And immediately, I realized it was Hughes. And you said, uh -huh. uh, hey... You said, hey, this is Ed. And I said, uh, is this Ed Grimsley? And you said, yeah, I just got out of the shower. And I said, oh, my God. And, and I said, it's, it is such an honor, you know, to speak with you. And you took the time um, to discuss the, the goggles, what I could possibly see, et cetera. And from there, I went ahead and purchased these goggles for about, you know, close to four grand. It was a huge investment. And I have to tell did you, you, did, you buy them, I, did you buy them? Did you buy them from me or somebody else? No, from you, from your group. Okay. And and I have to tell you, Mr. Grimsley, is I've been taking family and friends out and showing them these objects darting through the sky, and we we can identify what a satellite is because a satellite is a certain height and has a certain speed. But as you know, when you see these things in groupings uh, zipping across the horizon in seconds, you, your heart stops. And, and you look at that, and your whole reality just changes, you know? And, yeah. and I, just, I, I, just, I just, again, I want to applaud you for having the, being so brave and honest and, and bringing this out. And, and when I'm showing skeptics, and they look at it, and they, they give me back the goggles, and they say, what did I just see? And it completely broadens their perspective and their reality, and it changes their paradigm in which they live. And, and you like the you know, look on their face when they realize they're being lied to by everybody? Oh, well, the, well, Mr. Grimsley, everything we've been taught academically uh, through the media, it's all an illusion. And when we talk about this zombie apocalypse, we are surrounded by virtual zombies. Um, humanity has been dumbed down to a point where it's it's embarrassing. You 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 look at what they pipe out on CNN and Fox, and you look at the political system, and you look at both parties, and they're in essence the same thing, touting the same thing, touting war, touting um, uh, you know the, taking away your freedom. You see, and then more and more, I have to tell you this, more and more people are waking up. And the veil is getting thinner. And that's a good thing. But I can only hope that that veil is dropped soon enough. Because we're in a collision course for something not so good. And I think you can agree with that. Oh, I, I know so much more than I even tell the world because... Uh, I've been studying this for a good 20 years and watching the government manipulate the people and lie to them. And I've been watching our government get infiltrated and maneuvering to do what they want. And Eisenhower said, be careful, the military industrial bomb. Now, Mamie Eisenhower was my grandfather's first cousin. She and my grandfather talked about aliens, crash UFOs, how they were working with us, and that I even went and had a peace treaty with them. Mm -hmm. And then I hear stuff about their breaking the treaties, 
they're doing different stuff. And, you know, we got a lot of technology off of them, and I would doubt it in what we're not working together now to control the world and go out and get control of the universe. Because we're flying in and out at ease. And there's well, battles going on. There's battles going on out there. Well, and to your point, to your point, uh, Mr. Grimsley, uh, you, you're aware of the TR-3Bs. And I yeah. actually witnessed a, t- a, t- a massive TR-3B going over uh, Memphis. And it was silent. And, and to John McKinnon, you know who John McKinnon is? He's the one who hacked in the Pentagon and discovered the uh, non terrestrial no, 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 no. officer. No, that's Gary McKenna. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Gary. I'm thinking of someone else. But to the point is that, you know, and to Nick Pope, maybe we have a breakaway society that has, that possesses this technology. Well, I've talked to Nick Pope. He even bought me a beer a time or two, and we sat after conferences. And uh, and talking with Nick, he says that he knows I know a lot and that he can't tell me I'm wrong. And right. I says, well, tell me, tell me more. And he says, well, I can only say what I can say. He says, I have a life, and I had a job, and I can't step out of bounds very far. I says, well, I know that you know a lot more than you're telling me. And he says, but I'm telling what I can. So in other words, what you're allowed to say and what you can do is a point where if you go further, you're putting your head under the gillis. Mm-hmm. And he he's a good guy, but he knows a lot more than he's saying. And, sure. and I actually am saying less than I know. But I'm saying enough to try to get the world to wake up, and it's happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, amazing. We we've just got to try and work together. But the thing is, that new world order, military industrial complex, Nazi power, alien working in that whole group. They're out to control mankind. They're teamed up against us. And they've even, they're even developing hybrids, and I think they want to wipe out what they consider to be the low level and, and put in the higher breed. And believe me, if they had their way, right now a lot of us be exterminated and they're making plans to do it. And right now, it's not that they're going to take over. They have. We're in their control. They are moving us and steering us. All this economy crap has been created falsely to make us hurt and bring the United States down. And there's a woman out in California being prosecuted with her family for having their own garden in their backyard and growing their own food. And yet Obama's wife has a garden at the White House and brags about it. And they made laws about against having a garden. Well, to me, that's a treason thing. When you go to the UN and bring other countries' military into our country and say they're gonna help with the, taking the guns away, no, we have the right to our country. Our constitution. our constitution is not being honored for us by the government that's supposed to be honoring it. And when they bring in foreign troops, Hillary and Obama, when they're working on the UN doing it, that's just using another excuse, another way to take our protection. And we will be helpless. Now, that is an act of treason to go outside, bring foreign troops into our country, and do it and claim it to be involved in that. Well, Russia was a wolf pack. We were supporting the UN, and that's because the UN is being used by the secret government to manipulate us and control us. And they even want to put an international tax on us on top of what we got. Well, so, you know, I, I, don't, I don't mean to break in, Mr. Grimsley, but you look at the, the no debt ceiling. 
it, to me, it looks like it's a it's a uh, conscious attempt to destroy the American dollar. And once you destroy the economy, you bring in that new world order, one world currency. Your point. Right. Well, I'm, I agree with what's being tried to be done, but they're trying. Certain people and units are controlling European markets. Money in England, money in Russia. There's all those world people that are doing it. And, you know, I don't know how much they need before they have enough. They could spend what they have now. And to me, they're bound and bent on controlling mankind and owning it. Well, I don't know about you, but do you want to be a slave? Do you want to be owned and controlled? I mean, Obama, he's half black. And black people are following him like he's the Messiah. But at the same time, they don't have enough to see that he is bringing them down with the rest of us. And they're going to be slaves again. And it doesn't matter what color you are. They are taking this over. Now, people don't understand that the different nationalities in this world, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean, the Filipino, all these, and then the Scandinavian, different white races, the black races, different types. There is so many different nationalities out there and I believe that when the earth has been destroyed before I believe all these nations all these people have been brought to parts of the galaxy and replenish the earth and if we ever learn to get along here they cause problems and we fight with each other again and we make wars and we destroy things and they invest in war machines money and they make a big killing on us each other. I mean, Mr. Bush, his father, he was supplying money and supplies to Germany and to America. He was an uncle. George W. Bush has a state hosting room on his ranch in Texas. People have talked about it. Uh, it, it's just like how do you put a program together with brothers and human beings to get along with each other when there's somebody else out there trying to stab it, make you fight, get involved, get your money, get you to fight with each other and do the war and have your young die so that they can make money. I mean, people in Iran don't want to fight, war, and die. Iraq don't. They wanted to get along and live, but they also had their ways. It was just some bars. And this government went through 9-11 and a lot of crap to make them look like evil. And it was probably some of our own culprit operations that created 9-11. And so how do you deal with lie after lie? The Colorado Theater shooting. The young man was in a car, drugged out so bad that he couldn't even respond. And they had to break the car open to get him. To get him. They accused him. And there was a number of people in that theater it said there was a guy down front doing something. There was a guy by the side who was doing something like that. And then there was another man who bled to death, all covered, and he bled to death on somebody's lawn, and a team of guys dressed with masks and special suits come grabbed him off the lawn, put him in the truck, took off. And you see... Some of the things that took place, it couldn't have been yeah. And the stuff that was done 
was about ten thousand dollars worth of equipment and different things that used, and he didn't have money. So who gave it to him? I don't think he ever had possession of it. They took possession of him, drugged him, because his father was going to testify, and his father was a pretty well-known scientist. He was going to testify against some of the government people. And at the same time, if you shoot up a bunch of theater people and you do this and that, it makes it, oh, there's a nut loose and guns can't be trusted. They get the hands of nuts and they slaughter people. That was deliberately put on so that they could take a look get bad and they get busted on it. If they're finding out, you know, stage is put on. And a lot of good researchers and investigators are coming down. Now they're trying to hush it all up. But that's because the UN is going to be used to come in and take your gun today. That was a way of them going to do some problems to justify that happening. It's just like the guy that supposedly shot Ronald Reagan. He was friends with the Bush's family. He was their kid. He had some problems, but he probably got raped. And the thing is that there is a photograph that, that the government takes possession of but there was a guy in a window with a gun. And when the guy was shooting down on the street, the guy window, the one that shot Regan. So, and it, it was a photo that they've hidden and taken control. And everything going down is pretty bad. We're being basically, we're being manipulated at every turn to manipulate us, control us, school us, get our money to do various things that want to keep track of that. And it's because our government has been infiltrated, no longer our government, and they're secret. Involved with a space program that flies in and out to planets all the time. It can go to the Mars. Yeah. It's just unbelievable what it does. And I have seen them numerous times watching it out, dropping into the ocean. And, you know, I sound like I'm a nut, just rattling my tail, you know, and and I don't have rattles, but I'm just trying to tell the truth. And the truth is that we need help in all the directions we can get. But you and I have no way of standing up against the corruption of the government. We can sit around and do what we do right now, go, bah, bah. But the government doesn't listen to us. They support us. And then they lie about us if we're telling the truth. And they have special people go out there and say, oh, Ed Grimsley is a nut. He's just trying to make money. He's trying to sell goggles. Uh, he's ripping the world off, whatever. And what it is, they don't put their name on anything. Well, I put my name on what I'm saying because I'm mm-hmm. dumb and I have information of why and how. And believe me, I'm getting a lot of shit. A lot of, mm-hmm. and I'm through a lot of hell. I'm having a very rough time just surviving. And about four weeks ago, a house paint. A fire started in my area where my ranch is. I had no home on it, but I had a motor home. I had a, a camp trailer, a camper, and retired road contractor. I have my Cat 12 grader, my tobacco, my track wire tobacco, my dump truck, and I had these things parked on my ramp. And I had fire brakes and everything all flanked around for safe reasons. And yet, everything is burnt to the ground. 
I had a fishing boat. You take the fishing boat out to take seven or eight people out fishing downstairs. There's I was working on it fixing, and I had it with about fifty foot of clearance on every side of me. No fuel tank, nothing around. And it and the trailer burnt down, and yet twenty feet away the grass under a green. So basically, I'm pretty sure that they made sure that when they fire starting materials that when the fire did come that they would die. So I just took it for about $400,000 and that some of that stuff I was going to sell to help me clear up different bills, debts, and go on research. And when I have very positive that I build up and acquire, take people out, and then I have a pair sold in here, a pair sold in there, and then six pairs sold at one time. That's deliberately being done to put the herd on and keep what I'm trying to do, keep it out, keep it in control. And when I get told to stop doing what I'm doing, I say, well, so thank you. And these things happen. They'll probably kill me for John too. I guess if I did, I won't have to worry about wor- wor- worldly corruption and, and living in those conditions, huh? But uh, it's just like people that create free energy devices and they get something that's working, show, they demonstrate, and they're trying to get off copyright, tap, and everything there. Next thing you know, if they're found dead, beat to death in their laboratory. And it's the same thing with people treating and curing cancer, uh, oxygen therapies. It's just bizarre. And there's things that could be done with frequency. Now, you talk about zombies. You see, the government different countries are that has all these secret all weird they can release it on a from a satellite and emit frequencies down and interfere with your nerves There's, they emit things that can listen to you with no wires they can go up to that they can listen to you Talking in your front yard or your house. Oh. Yeah. See, they've been allowed hey, Ed, to talk. Hey, Ed, your, your uh, phone's breaking up a little bit again. Well, they're probably not liking what I'm saying. Yeah. Is it any Let me better? ask you this. Y- yeah, it's a little bit. It's just, it's just in and out. Um, I wanted to ask you this about the craft and everything you've been seeing. Um seeing at night are, are you i mean are you, are you seeing them during the day now as well not you know now that you're consciously aware of them at night are you seeing them during the day at all i have seen a few craft in the daytime but not like at night and i have actually seen craft three thousand feet above me like as if they were small airplanes but beautiful saucers 150 200 feet across ribs down the top of them looking like an umbrella rib and a mm-hmm. dog and I've seen them in a group of three uh, closed and it's always something like you don't have a ha- camera hooked up and you see the amazing ones mm-hmm. or somebody standing there and they're helping you film they go wow I got it then they look at the camera and they had, it, they had put the five or something. So, not to say that I don't have some footage. A lot of things are real good. But when you get government visitors to come to your town, 
can't say they want to see your footage and don't release anything without permission. Uh, I basically told them that I didn't have anything to show them. They couldn't mm-hmm. take them because all my footage turned out blurry and I threw it away. And the guy goes, good answer, Ed, good answer. And Ed, I have a quick question. This, this is Eric. I have a quick question. Um, have, you, have you been seeing, uh, two weeks ago, I was in my backyard, and I've been seeing, I know this sounds crazy, a golf ball size light orbs that are going over, uh, basically going over the house about 50 yards over the house. They go for about 100 yards, and they dissipate to nothing. Um, I called my fiancé out after I saw one, she came out and witnessed another one that came by. Again, a golf ball size, like light orb that just vanishes. Uh, is after this with while, or without the goggles? No, without the goggles. This is in broad okay. daylight. This is on a Saturday at 3.30 in my backyard. And they were incredibly low. And then she got tired. She walked in. I got my camera, and I actually took pictures, still pictures of these things, there were four sets that went by, and then eventually three in a formation off in the distance went by, and each blinked out. Now, I don't know. Here's, here's a thought, is that I think when you open yourself to these realities, more comes to you. But I wanted to ask you, Ed, have you seen these small light orbs uh, during the day or at night? Yes, a lot of it. And, you know, uh, I don't know how to say this because I don't want to scare people, but there are energy forms or spiritual forms that are traveling uh, on the earth all over the place. And they actually have the ability to come through your window and move around in your house and then exit and move back out. Uh, I just, three days ago, was talking with a young lady, and she had one come from a distance that she saw it and zoom right up and go right into her head. Hmm. And, and, And then basically she was awake, and then as if she went to sleep and then came back to, and... The only thing I could tell her is that it was probably a spiritual vehicle or a spiritual being, Mm -hmm. and maybe it didn't go off and go to heaven or hell or wherever we go to, but that maybe it wanted to stick around, and it might have came to her and hitchhiked or joined in, or it might have been a relative spirit or that. And I I see these great big bubbles with the night vision goggles. Yeah. And they look like a hotter they look like a hot air balloon. But they're rounder. They're rounder and they're clear and you can look like you're looking into them but you're not. And then sometimes you can see like an image of a being in there. And well, Ed, I think Ed, the, let me ask you, Ed, uh, that I had experienced, I saw one the size of a beach ball 20 feet away, and it came towards me as if it were, as if it had a consciousness about it. And it, just like you said, you could see through it, and it looked like cytoplasm. It had a, had a, a texture to it, and it looked like it was curious, but I was amazed at the physical size of it. I, I think it could be like an intelligent energy. And it may even be looking for a body or a source or whatever. Uh, I'm just not, I just don't know everything, but I know a lot. And I've been out there researching and doing, and there's just about nothing out there going on that I haven't seen or been around. And I think I think we're looking at multiple dimensions. I think with the goggles you can see distance, and you can you can make out other spectrums of light. But I think we're looking at layers and layers and layers of dimensionality. That's what I'm thinking here. So the light orbs could be um, a spiritual dimension. Then you have the UFOs as a completely, you know, other dimensional being. I, I think there's many layers to this. I believe, yeah, I think you're right. 
And, and I think you will find that in the human race or anything, there is some individuals or entities that are good and bad. And I think that orbs can be good or bad. Probably for most part, they're good. But in one situation, I don't want to mention any names or how long ago, but it hasn't been too long. This girl that I knew, that she grew up and I was like an extra uh, person around and picked on her as a kid and, and, uh, and watched him playing baseball and stuff, you know, and I used to be a coach and everything. And when she knew I was the UFO guy, night vision guru and all that, she calls me up and wants to come and see with his boyfriend. And I, and I said, fine, come on. So they do, and then they get me aside from the group, and they're telling me about these orbs that I talk about, and that they come and they go across the vineyard, and they come over and they move in, and they come towards the house, and they hang around outside the house, and they've got brave, and a couple of came in the house, and then they look at them, and they've left. And I told them, don't get too friendly, because you don't know what these orbs want. Maybe they just want to visit. Maybe they want to come and take you over. Maybe they are bad spirits trying to find out what they can do. So you have to be careful. So they said, oh, no. So then it got to the point where they were telling me things come right up to our door, and they'll hang out outside, and we'll open the door, and they'll come in. They can come right through the window or whatever, and they'll come in, and we'll sit down and be eating dinner, and they'll move around in the room. So then, a couple of months go by, these things are really getting active and friendly. Well, the guy. And a couple of his friends go to town. And I don't know if they went to get beer or snacks or barbecue food or whatever. But they're away, and she's at the house. And they call up. They say, oh, you can't believe it. We're coming down the road. We'll be here in a couple minutes. The orbs are coming around. They're going right beside the car, in front of the car. And they're just really friendly. And it's almost, it's almost like they want to join us. And she goes, oh, far out. And then they hang up, and she never hears from them. They don't show up at home. And she gets a phone call. They were all in an accident right after they talked, and they were all killed. So strange, strange things can happen. The only thing you can do is try to be aware and try to deal with it in the right way. Yeah. And don't let something take your spirit or your soul. And yeah. I have seen these big ones. I've seen them over subdivisions. I've seen them over mobile trailers. And I go back the next day and I check around that neighborhood and I find out that usually someone has passed away. So I suspect that when I see this thing moving 50 feet above the house and you can't see it unless you have glasses and then it moves off and goes to another place comes back and it, it is actually the size of a hot air balloon that carries people in a basket and you can't see it only with the fifth level goggles and the cheap low grade goggles don't work and I've been out with people closing up, getting ready to leave, and have one show up and come over by this field and come across the field right at me and be about 200 feet away, and I shine all green laser onto it, and it kind of illuminates it a little with the laser, and it comes through the stops. I turn the laser off and it moves a little closer, turn it back on stops, and then it moves over to the right of me, then it moves back to the left of me, goes out around and behind me, and I was getting a little scared, I was wondering, well, oh, am I going somewhere or what, and then I just kept shining the laser at it, blinking and blinking it, and uh, 
and it finally picked up, moved on, went across over towards the subject, and then it disappeared. And I have seen those things move and feed the book supersonic from a standstill position, just a whoosh, and they're gone, and they've flown so fast they're out of sight. Mm-hmm. And only thing I can say is they're spiritual beings. Are they soul takers? Are they, do they take a dead person's spirit and take it to a special place or I don't know what? But they're existing. They're real. And one of the other things that I used to think, well, probably not, is I was one night with my dog and looking at the dog. I just blocked my gate. I was getting ready to come down three, you know, well, maybe, what, 130 feet to the house. Well, my dog started growling and snarling. I'm looking at him with the goggles, and his hair is standing up, and he's looking up at a certain direction with his head. So I turned the goggles on and looked up that way, and here I saw it. And it was a human-like body with a cape fluttering on top and behind it. And it had its arms out in front of it, about 300 feet high, and it was traveling at about the feet of somebody that pedal a bicycle. And my dog growled and barked. And it turned its head and looked towards us. It leaned its arms in our direction and just broke over and started coming right at us. And I just broke and run and I called the dog. Come on, dude. I just hit the house on two. And the dog and I came in, locked the door, and I turned all the lights on. And I had a 12 gauge ready to go and my 357 Magnum. And I set, you know my back and good position lights off the house and waiting to see if it would break through. But the dog would move from one side of the house and he'd and then he'd move over the other side and the other side and the other side. And like as if this thing was circling around trying to figure out how to get her to what. And then finally, three hours of this, I went into the room, put the dog in with the bedroom and I put a couple of things out there trip lever lights on the snake noise, the box noise, the fish drink, like a wake up. I went in, I was barely able to get to sleep, so I was thinking of the trip. And about a month later, I told a few people and everybody laughed. So, I would have laughed too if I heard about it. But I know mm-hmm. what I saw, and, and so I know it was there, I know it was real. And I think how many things out there that we think is fly or a fairy tale are actually real. Dracula, Mothman, all that. So Tommy George Norrie was at a place and I was there. I told them. And they looked at me and laughed. Oh my God. You got to see Mothman. Hey, hey Ed, can you... um? Your phone's breaking up a little bit again. Maybe I'm. I maybe I get it up higher. Is it better when I'm up higher? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds right now. Yeah. I think what I'm doing is my mouth is sliding down. You know, old age. <laughs> so anyway, that's just you know you you can just go on endlessly. There are things that are unbelievable that happen. And if you look at them and try to figure them out, it's scary because people think you're crazy because you talk about that. But yet, Mm -hmm. I don't talk about something that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, Because it's only one more thing for people to get more ammo to say, oh, look, he's crazy. But the truth of it is, I'd rather be half crazy and totally stupid. And if the mm-hmm. world thinks there's nothing going on out there, mm-hmm. and they don't believe in aliens, they don't believe in spaceships and stuff, 
then I can't help them. They're totally stupid. And well, Ed, 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 can I break, can I break in, Ed, real quickly? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, on that in that point, uh, you know, I've been studying Zachariah Sitchin and his his take on the Anunnaki, on the origin of man. And when you reverse and you and you review uh, this alternative concept of how we became humanity, I think that's super interesting. I'm sure you've done research on that. Uh, and when you go back that far and you look at the way uh, history may have been uh, uh, created or how it's actually formed, uh, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother uh, bailiwick right there. Are, are you familiar with the Sitchin? Yeah. And, and what, yeah, what's your take on that? Well, you know, I believe that... Right now, that the Earth has been destroyed a number of times, yep. and you can see it with the mountains and the gravel up high in the mountains that used to be a stream bed, uh, sea life found in the Sierra Mountains or in the Colorado Mountains, and like it used to be an ocean, and you uncover, you kick it around, and there is, you know, clams and things. It, it's it's just. It had to be a lot of shaking, moving, and going on, water levels. And off the coast of India, there's a town that they found that's 150 feet underwater. Mm -hmm. And it's all stones and pillars and things like that. So at one time, there was human-like beings living there, and they got destroyed. They got flooded over. And supposedly, the legend is that those beings were there and that other craft came in and was fighting with them that had lightning-like weaponry and that they had firing back at the other craft things that were like lightning going up from the ground and and going after the craft. So it sounds like to me that we're looking at one alien fighting against another one that it took up squatter rights or was here on Earth and wasn't part of the other Earthling people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those are just thoughts. But if you go and you take all these different things like that and put it together, you, you will basically be amazed because there's too much of that stuff that becomes exact after one story over here on the world and another over there on the world and it is just too much coincidence and collaboration, uh, collaboration to be a lie. There's actual actual footage, and this was some amazing footage when I seen it. I don't know the exact name of it, but if you type in if you type in UFO and um, shot at, you'll actually find a video of a uh, UFO coming close to the Earth's atmosphere, and then this and flash comes the from the shot. Earth. Yeah, and yeah. it blinks at it from the Earth like some type of vibration or light. And then it backs up a little bit, and then a laser beam shoots from the Earth and tries to hit the UFO, and it turns around and leaves. I'm actually thinking that the UFO, whoever's occupying the UFO, is the good guys. And, well, and, I and think whoever's you shooting might, at them, you might be right. Are the bad They're guys. trying to keep out our helpers. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think if the whole Zachariah Sitchin thing holds any weight about us being you know, the homo sapiens being created as, you know, to be workers. It's it's pretty obvious that we work our nine to fives so a few people can sit up basically on the thrones and we're just like mice running on the, the uh, wheels to keep the system running. And as long as you have businesses and, and everything going, it keeps everything spinning and all the, the energy for everybody working together so that a few people can sit up and live lavish and not work at all. I think well, most Derek, of us are aware of that, and Eric would probably agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Derek, think about this, is that the, the human, you know, homo sapien, we only utilize about 8 to 10% of our brain. 
And I mm-hmm. believe that we were manufactured to be basically slave workers and not so intelligent. And you wonder we have this magnificent brain, and why aren't we able to access it like a computer? And mm-hmm. I think there's something there. And you look at the junk DNA. You look at the way it's all spliced together, all you know, nilly willy. And and you look at all these facts. And you look at the you look at the jump between Cro Magnum and Homo sapien. There there's a huge leap there. And, mm-hmm. and so when you piece this thing I refer together, to that as the missing link. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, there. You know, it's right there. And when you pose that question to the scientists or geneticists and say, "Why is the DNA strand spliced together in this fashion?" They really can't give you a straight answer. And that that speaks volumes right there. And mm-hmm. so, as a critical thinker, you know, we need to unlearn what we've been taught. And and when we start thinking critically about the big picture. It all starts coming in quite clear. There's a lot of psychic phenomenon that that happens just with regular people, whether it's uh, synchronicity, as small as being able to get this notion of your friend who you haven't talked to in a long time is calling, and then they call you on the phone, or Intuition. you think of a pro- yeah, or you think of a program that you haven't seen in years, and then as soon as you think of it, it comes on the television or a commercial. And just little small stuff like that, stuff like that, that we need to pay attention to because we're not being taught how to, you know, utilize these giftings at school or on the jobs or anything like that. Like, they don't want you to uh, utilize those giftings and think for yourself. And if you do start talking about it, you're demonized or you're an occultist or you're a psychic. And that has a lot of negative things that go along with it to a lot of people just by using those terminologies and stuff. Oh, Derek, Derek, you're on a, on a, this is sort of a tangent, but you're absolutely right. This is the deal, is that you, as a human, have more power than you can possibly man- imagine. You can manifest your reality. You can mm-hmm. manifest anything you wish. And you should know that, of all people, because what you've done in the last year or two years, you've manifested what you wanted. Okay? Mm-hmm. So we can talk about, you know, UFOs and interdimensionals and, and yeah. human history, but it goes even deeper than that. I mean, reality is even, I can't remember who coined the phrase, it's even stranger than you can imagine. Yeah. Okay? It's all stranger than, but you possess, you possess as a human being more power than you know. You just have to know how to access it and manifest that. Does that make yeah. sense? Oh yeah, I, and I think that's that that was known by the ancients. I think that was known by our ancestors and things. My whole thing is to to actually uncover that and get back to it and say, yeah, you know, technology is good. We're actually able to have this conversation and, and link together and things like that through technology. But if we forget our essence, if if we forget who we were before the materialism, before the computers, where Facebook and this 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 web that connects us all together. There's actually a real web, which is called the, you know, some people call it the global brain. Some people right. call it the source field, where we're all connected. Right. You know, we can we, we can sense each other's feelings. We know when somebody's going through tribulation or whatever, so you know how to, you know, talk to that person. You can you can sense when they're going through trials and stuff like that. And that's what what I'm about. That's what I'm, you know, with my music and the radio show. It's like, look, return to your essence. Return to who you were before the materialism, man, and there's so much to uncover, and I, I think our ancestors had it, and I don't think it's this mystic, and it's so far away, I think it was very close to our distant past, even with the North American Indians or the Egyptians, and all these people had this deep spirituality that ran through, and it was normal, and we're so far removed from that now, it's 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 sad, really. And the Atlanteans, some speculate the Atlanteans were at that level. They were spiritual people. They weren't materialistic at all. But something changed. The materialism creeped in, and that's what ultimately destroyed their society. So that's where we mm-hmm. are at this point. We're, we're very materialistic. We're all about the iPhone, the iPad, yeah. computers. Yeah, we've been infiltrated by, it's almost like a demon of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And so we all think about how to get our hands on that iPod or that Ferrari, whatever, and we don't think about how to get a hug from the fellow human mm-hmm. to make sure that they yeah. got food. 
Yeah. Now, I, I actually, uh, I do a lot of inventive work and things like how to generate, make electricity, how to make cars run further. Uh, I used my GI build for two years at Technical College for Automotive. And, you know, I never have enough money. I never get enough support to try mm -hmm. to build it, to fix it. But those who have done it, they end up dead. They end up dead for serious. Mm -hmm. uh, they jumped off of a building. They were killed in their lab by something. All there's a great interest of death to keep that down and on and keep oil flowing. It is very possible that they have a full-time team that goes around and they look for things to threaten their financial mm -hmm. If it comes out, it loses, they try to destroy it. And, you know, I'm almost 68 years old. I'm having a rough time, and everything I have that's destroyed or taken away, it's almost like they're going to try and stop me from functioning by destroying the world around me. And it, it's terrible to try and retire and realize you don't have enough money to buy groceries pay your tax and mm -hmm. like if you're behind on a property tax they charge you 10% penalty on what you post and then they charge you 18% of that so you're paying 28% and you know about quite a third about one you have a three thousand dollar tax bill, and, and they add another fifteen hundred to it plus the new bill. And if you're old or retired and you're trying to make it meet, you can't keep up with paying your taxes. So then they take your property away from you and tell you to go live on the street. Now, isn't that a great country that does that for you? You pay taxes. Your vet thought for them, and then at the end they want. It. We're totally being lied to and manipulated, over yeah. And the president faked a birth certificate to make him look legal. Now, if I faked paperwork to the court, to the city, or made a phony birth certificate up and tried to pass it off, that'd be fraudulent. Now. But nothing happens to him. Yeah. He commits, he, can, he commits conspiracy to undermine our Constitution. Yeah. And he agreed that he was going to support it and protect it. And he's doing nothing but taking it away. Well, see, I don't yeah. think he has the right to take the Constitution away. I don't think anybody has the right to do it. And if they do it, then that's a conspiracy, and they need to be arrested. They need to be taken out of office. Yeah, but it's like we were saying a while ago. I, I really think that, you know, the evil ones are on the earth. I don't think there's a threat from the outside that we have to worry about. I think that the evil ones, even as in the scriptures, that Satan and his angels fell out of heaven or were kicked out of heaven and cast down to the earth, I think they've set up their dominion on earth, and they're running everything. And they've infiltrated the government, they've infiltrated the educational system, they've whitewashed history, and they've got us right where they want us. I think it's planned. I don't I don't think that um I don't think we have a choice. I think it's planned. But at the same time, there's a lot of negative talk and a lot of, you know, fear. I'm really optimistic about everything. I really think that there is a God and that there is a, a supreme creator who really does have our best interest in mind. I really believe that. I have peace believing that. If I didn't believe that, you know, I would have no reason not to rob still and just try to get with them and sell my soul to get with those higher up doing this corruption and things like that. But, you know, I really well, think I that, I you know, these, that. yeah, oh, I don't either. 
I don't either. Well, and I Derek, think that, I Derek, think there's I, a lot of people who don't want to be that either. It's not just Derek, us. I think, I, I think you're I think you're absolutely right. I think we are coming into a new era of, of positive, not mm-hmm. negative. I think yeah. the veil is being lifted. We're having this conversation. I wouldn't have had this conversation three, five years ago. I, mm-hmm. I have learned so much and, and, and again I keep saying that the phrase the veil has been lifted. Mm-hmm. I think we are coming into an era where it's going to change because more people yeah. are going to be awakened. And the, and the powers that be realize that. That's why you see this intensity and, and, and this, I mean, you, you see things that are just, just alarming. It's like, why in the world would they do that? The people at the top understand the veil is being lifted. People are awakening. And I see nothing but a positive future. I do too. People are a lot of I do too. A lot, this is Anthony. A lot of people forget who the real boss is, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Mr. Grimsley, I wanted to say, um, listening to your story and everything about how your stuff got burned and, and all that, I think that's really um, messed up, you know. It's unfortunate for you. Um, but drive on, you know. Jim Slider, yeah. Drive on, man, and, and, and keep and keep moving forward with, with what you're doing. I mean, I appreciate it. I'm pretty sure that uh, Eric and, and Derek appreciate it too, and not only us but the listeners as well. You know, and the rest of the world, they they need to know this. You know, I'm I'm not real um, educated on the subject, but uh, you know, me and Derek have gone out and we've stargazed, and and uh, I mean, it's opened my mind um, in, in a huge way. I'm, I was just wowed and awed, you know, when I got a chance to go out and do that with them. I'm totally just blown away. So. You know, I, my eyes are open to it now, and um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that uh, we can all appreciate the work and the extensive study and you know that you've done in in the field. I just wanted to say that, and uh, I'll be praying for you, man. I hope everything works out. Well, I definitely uh, can use all the prayers I can get, but you well, know, when yeah. you said you believe in a creator and and that there's something more powerful. Mm-hmm. I'd like to try to make it as quick as I can, but I was in the military, and I was walking across my air base in northern Michigan, and I went across to my duty section, and there was a, a, a flat pad and a forklift ramp, and it was storming, and it started to snow, and it was 40 degrees below in northern Michigan, right up there by the lakes, you know? And... Mm-hmm or near the Canadian border, and and I'm walking across, and I think there's enough snow on the ramp to walk safely, but big mistake, it had a little snow drifted across it, and it had thawed a little bit that day, and then it was ice, and my feet went in the air, my back slammed into the crevice that the, where the angle changes, and my head slammed down. I was knocked unconscious, when I woke up, I realized I was paralyzed in the middle of my back down and that I was blind and I couldn't move myself and I couldn't drag. And it was 8 o'clock at night, snowing 40 below zero and about a 20 mile an hour wind. And I tell you, laying there, I got religious. Mm-hmm. And a lot of prayer, I would fall asleep and I was so cold and so freezing that everything hurt. And I'd fall asleep and dream that I was on an island in the coconuts and the sand. And uh, and then I'd be all peaceful and then I'd be cold and wake again. And then finally, I felt something against my chest. And... I heard it, and it jumped back up, and it said, What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you alive? And it kicked me in the ribs. And I said, Don't keep kicking me, or I won't be. And the the guy says, What are you doing? I says, Oh, I just thought I'd take a nap. And I had a crazy sense of humor, even though I was almost dead. And he goes, What? I told him I fell. I'm paralyzed. I'm blind. I can't move, and I've been yelling for help and then passing out. He said, man, I'm going to go for help right away. 
And he goes, don't go anywhere. And I go, duh. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'll be right back. And he went and told help where I was. And he came running black with a blanket or a coat or something because I couldn't see. And he was brushing snow off me. I was buried in snow. And he saw my face had icicles coming out my nose and over my mustache. And I had icicles on my cheeks. And my fingers were frozen and discolored. And I couldn't bend my fingers anymore. And he got me help, and they put me in a tank of ice water to thaw me out. Well, in that time when I was praying to send me help, I didn't care what it came from. But he ran out of cigarettes in the barracks at 2.30, and he went to get a pack of cigarettes cutting across the base out of the machine, stepped on me and fell over me in the dark at 2.35. And when he told me that he was looking for cigarettes, then I, I just laughed because smoking saved my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's amazing. And so I, then I went through a lot of hell and trying to heal and get things together, and I still have problems. But I had forgot for a long time. Yeah. I had told God, well, Frank, save me, help me. I do what I could to help the world. And about 10 years ago, I needed heart surgery. They did some surgery and then he messed up on it. He had put the wire on it. I saw some clock storms and I it blocked up and was given a heart attack and they had to go in and free it up. And when they did, I was I looked at the machine and they were it out probe whatever and my heart quit. And I said, my heart quit. And the doctor said, no. Ooh, off I went and died. And I was dead for a little while, and they stipulated me twice about the death. And when I woke up, I had been talking to spiritual spirits within several. And then I died again while he worked. And they stipulated me twice to got me back. Then, the third time I died, it took a long time. And they stipulated me, and then they stipulated me, and stipulated me five times. And they did me back. And the doctor said to call it. And the nurse told him to do something to himself, and she did one more to me. And she really laid it on me. My heart beat came back and it fell. And so after about a half hour, they had broken the stipulated me. And I had all this water coming out of my body all over the day from all the people. And I felt like I was red hot and hard to feel. And, uh, like, Two was able to talk with the nurses, and they don't get to be rough. They thought I was gone forever. Mm-hmm. And the spirits that were in me, they stayed with me. Mm-hmm. And, and even though I was awake in the intensive care, I could communicate with people. We had in and out, in and out so much. And you know, when I was laying on the table and died, I thought I was all by myself. I saw a tunnel and it's worth light and all that. And I thought to myself, I've died. I guess I should go towards that light. This entity says, no, no. Don't, don't do that. That's our threat on the earth. And it, it's an image of the brain. And I go, who are you? What are you saying are? on. It's, well, when you forget your keys, I tell you, you forgot your keys. 
or you should know that I'm part of it. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, okay. And when I came to, after the first time Sanity had talked to me, I looked at that tunnel of light and my heart started. And a month later, I was able to and he looked over at me and he said, wow. well, do you know who I am? And I go, yeah. He says, who are you? And I said, who are you? He said, do you think you died? I said, oh, yeah. He just did for a long time. He said, her voice talk to him with him. So, yeah, too. He said, you were dead. <laughs> wow. That's, a, that's amazing, man. And I, and I said, a, how many people do you kill? And he says, yeah, but I bring them back. <laughs> huh. That's, man, that's amazing. That's an awesome way to end the show. Um, man, thanks for speaking with us for right over an hour and a half, man. We appreciate having you on. I guess right before we let you go, why don't you give everybody the links to where they can check out your work at? Well, I have a link of www edgrimsley.com and then there's several places around where on YouTube and and uh, different things about night vision goggles and UFOs I'm probably about 800,000 places and then there's a whole bunch of places where the debunkers say oh he's a fake, he's a phony mm-hmm. uh, you know blah blah he's just trying to make money selling glasses well anytime I sell goggles they're cheaper than what you can get them for brand new the same thing because I get them at the factory I'm a dealer and I get wholesale and then I pass them on to the people and then I tell the people what to look for and try to train them and mm-hmm. then they're part of the team the sky watchers you know and yeah, well. it's been going fast and growing all over the world so even if I die next week my work is going to go on as long as people are staying up here. And the truth, you're seeing it, hearing it. So is Eric and them, and mm-hmm. a million other people around the world that are saying, hey, this is true. It's not a lie. So they yeah. try harder to debunk me and make me look bad. And my phone number is on the website, mm-hmm. uh, it's over the place. And I try to answer the phone whenever I can. I mean, my God, I've gotten phone calls at 2 and 3 and 4 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like he says, I'm in the shower in the morning, and, and I answer the phone, and he can the shower runner. I mean, yeah. that's the way I do, you know? Yeah. And if I sell a pair of goggles and make $200 on a, on a pair of goggles for somebody else with 600 it helps support my work. Mm-hmm. And then do that, but at the same time, yeah. there's a conspiracy work that I want to steal or have broke into a location sold mm-hmm. and and uh, stole three hundred dollar laser. And, uh, it's just yeah. like it gets so disgusting that I I almost think I should just try to help animal time rather <laughs> than animal. But I still Basically, feel like huh? as long as I can get a few people to listen. That's fine, but mm-hmm. it's so cool. Ed, let me let me break in, Ed, before you leave. Uh, this is Eric. I just want to let you know yeah. that you're doing a great job. Um, because of you, I've been able to expose many, many people to the reality and just know that, that you have touched many, many people and to continue the work. And uh, I, I really respect how brave you are uh, being criticized. And, and I tell you what, at the end of the day, um, this will all come out, and a new paradigm will occur. Mm-hmm. And uh, people like you have really made a difference. So well done, sir. Well, thank you. I just hope I can bring more money in and keep from starving to death and losing my properties and goggles stolen because they know if I don't have goggles, I can't do half the work. And so, uh, well, you know, it's just crazy thing, you know. If some millionaire wants to give some money away, I wouldn't mind a little help because uh, I'm I'm teetering right on the edge of dropping in, you know. And 
I still, I, I just feel like you shouldn't be punished for telling the truth. It's not working out that way. And for every 10 people that understand you and believe you, some idiot will call up to me, you ought to be shot. You don't believe in yeah. God. You believe in aliens and you this, and you that. And mm-hmm. I, I sat and I told the guy, I says, I believe in God. And I think aliens are part of God's creation. Everything. Yeah. And I said, mm-hmm. you don't believe in God? And he says, no, I believe in God. You don't. How do you say I don't? I'm telling you, as a human, open your eyes. Look toward God. Ask the right questions and try to get the truth. And rather it yeah. sounds like it's bad or not, I'm trying to tell you the truth and help you. And I'm trying to help God yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, how can you say that? I explain my situation, what I'm trying to do, and and he's the guy who first told me and said I ought to be shot. By the time we talked mm. for about 20 minutes, he says, can I call you back a little bit? I said, okay. So about 15 minutes later, he calls me back. And he says, listen, i got to apologize. He says, you're not who I thought I was. You were. And he says, I got a little money. I'm going to check the bank with my wife, and I'll send it. A week later, I got a hundred dollar check from him in the mail. So that's awesome. Well, yeah, like I said, man. I mean, the one who was watching over you when you was in the snow, and uh, I think he's still watching over you. And as long as you stand on that path, doing what you're supposed to do, he's going to make provisions for you to do that. And uh, man, thanks so much for calling, Ed. And we're going to have you back on. Here in the next few months, if that's fine. Yeah, and you know, there's a couple other people I can line you up with that know the real truth. Uh, yes, yeah, send yeah, me those emails, like, man. If you can line it up, we'd definitely like to get those know, names you like, mentioned to me. Oh, uh, like Roger Lear, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Jordan Maxwell, mm-hmm. Jose Escamilla. I mean, these are people that they're they're telling you the truth. They're not trying to bullshit anybody. Yeah. But Every one of us that are out telling the truth, we have a rough go of it. And finances yeah. and everything else. There's a lot of people that are out there putting on conferences, playing the big role in the shows. And you yeah. know, they're artificial and they're making money at it. Now what good does it do you yeah. and other people who just want to simply get the truth? Yeah, Jordan Maxwell, yeah, he's awesome. I've, I've actually spoke with him a few hours on the phone, and, and uh, he definitely helped me out a lot, his lectures and just speaking to him in general. You know, with that being said, we, you know, we're talking about orbs and spirits and things like that, and definitely want to end on a positive note, man, because when you study demonology, when you study and research, uh, you know, behind spirits and things like that, you find out that fear itself is a spirit in the scriptures it says the lord has not given you a spirit a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind so therefore we under we understand that fear is a spirit that actually operates and when you're dealing with fear and just fear mongering you're dealing with demons so that's one thing we don't want to let the people leave on a note of to be scared like i said i really believe that the supreme creator whoever you think he is He has our best, it, she, whatever you want to call it. They have our best interest in mind. I feel it in my heart, and that's what this show is about. Even though, you know, we're going to, you know, be approaching some times that are going to be shaky, are going to be hard, are going to be a little bit bumpy, but I think we're going to make it through. I think you're going to agree with me, can't you? Yes, yes, I completely agree. That's amazing. Well, yeah, thanks for, you know, calling in, man. You guys helping me out with the show, and, uh, it was a good first time talking with you, man. Oh, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. I really appreciate awesome. uh, talking to everybody, and uh, I'll talk to you offline and uh, to review the show, and, and I've got some things to talk to you about. And, and, again, I appreciate being invited. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, we'll be doing it next week, uh, every Wednesday, so everybody who's you know downloading the podcast, sharing the, the, the message on Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that, thanks for everybody tuning in and um, everything and everybody in the chat room as well. And uh, we will be back next week. Anything you want to say in closing, Anthony? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, man. I mean, every time I get a chance to do this, it's more and more enlightening. 
for me, you know. Um, uh, Mr. Grizzly obviously stole the show. He's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Eric, I haven't actually had a chance to meet you, man, but uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to meet you, in, you know, in the future, man. And uh, thanks a lot, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, all right. Hey, nice to meet you, and I, I'm sure you will. It's a small world. It's a small universe, and... And, again, I think there's a reason why I was connected to Derek and, and, and got involved with this. I think we have similar ties. It's, it's, it's a strange world in which we live in, you know? Mm-hmm. Whenever the door is open for you, you just got to walk through them. And um, if you right. don't, it's I, on you. So yeah, you know, how I can you not? I think we're in for some really interesting times, and I think we should all enjoy it. And I think I think your yeah. point, Derek, is just stay positive. Because it, this is yeah. just nothing but a ride. You're you're a, a spirit oh, yeah. in a physical body, and, yeah. and just enjoy the ride and be positive. And there's no fear, and you manifest what you want. If you manifest what you want, it will come true. And Derek, mm-hmm. you know that because everything that you've done, look what you've done. Look at the show you've created. Look at look, the reality you've created for yourself. It's mm-hmm. only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you're boundless. Yeah. There, there are I agree. Problems. Yeah. I agree, man. I'm telling you, fear is crippling, man. It, it. I remember when I first got introduced to the truth movement or whatever, it was through fear, you know, and, and that's what it is for a lot of people because it takes a lot of different things to wake people up. And sometimes it may be, you know, 9-11 truth or chemtrails or whatever the case is to, to where you find out that, hey, this world doesn't operate like I thought it did. Like for some reason, like in my mind, I, I thought that, like, like you know, the presidency and all government were like these righteous, you know, people. And then you see them lying to us on on television, whether it be Clinton, you know, looking dead in the camera, telling you from the bottom of his heart he did not have relations with that woman, and everybody believed him. And then, the, you know, and then just you know, a few days later, it comes out. And he's like, well, yeah, you know, I did have relations with the woman or whatever. And it's like, man. And then, you know, you find out about different stuff that, that, that the government's doing. And you say, hold on, this I, I put a lot of stock and I put a lot of trust in these people who can't be trusted. No. Right. And then and then you yeah. start going down the rabbit hole as, as far as you want to go. And you find out that this world does not operate the way they say it does. Our, our bodies do not operate the way they they say it, it does. And, you know, this its system is designed to keep us in bondage and to keep us, Useless uh, eaters. Just, right. Yeah. Derek, you're absolutely right. Let me tell you something. What, what's amazing is that if what I've discovered is this. If you turn off your TV, if you turn off CNN and Fox and the media, that creates a consensus reality. And so that, in essence, becomes reality, what comes out of that box in your living room. Mm-hmm. But if you shut it off, but if you shut that box off, your reality completely changes, and it becomes more positive. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think that's a, it's the biggest propaganda tool ever created. If the Nazis had yeah. TV, they could have ruled the world. Okay? Mm-hmm. And, and so that's the key here. Create your own reality, manifest what you want, and it will come true. That's the secret to everything. You, mm-hmm. you have amazing powers, and you have no idea. But because we're consuming fluoride and we're consuming Monsanto products and we're watching sports and, and, we're, and we're watching CNN and we're being dumbed down as a society, you are not reaching the pinnacle of who you are and what you can do. That's the secret. You agree? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, agree. People need to know that. People need yeah, to know no. that, you know. Uh, you talking about Clinton, man? That cat was like, I did it in hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I did it well, in hell. If, yeah, if you want to do political, they're all they all they're all skull and bones. They're all on the yeah. same page. It's all yeah. Republicans and Democrats are they're basically the same ilk. Mm-hmm. Are, yeah. I voted for the first time in my life for Obama. And then mm-hmm. quickly I realized that his administration did the same push and the actions that they yeah. Allowed. War, et cetera, and then I realized that was it. That the reality yeah. kicked in is that it's one one control dictatorship. Movement. It's a dictatorship, and they yeah. want you to think that your vote counts. They want you to think yeah. that you're involved, 
Yeah. So, you know, you'll be a part of the game. You'll yeah. you think that you have a say so, but it's planned out. All of it's yeah. planned out. You don't you can't vote the devil out of office. Come on now. Right. But you, you know, know it doesn't scary, work like that. Scary? But you know it's scary is like I have you know, pretty intelligent I consider intelligent friends. Mm-hmm. He, when you try to communicate these ideas to them, they look at you as if you have two heads. And Mm -hmm. you you go through my line item and say, this administration is doing the same as this administration, they still think it's it's a duality issue. It's like, well, my my guy is better than your guy. They're still, they're brainwashed. They're an S zombie. And that's what's the, I think that's the scariest thing of of, of all Mm -hmm. concepts that we've been discussing is the fact that your friends are in the stupor. Mm-hmm. They they have these glassy eyes and they have their own. They're in a matrix. They're, yeah. No, that's not insane. But their perception of reality is 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 just ridiculous. Yeah. They've been sold a lie, and um, I, for one, with my music and just with everything I've been through, I mean, it was hard for me to come out and talk. When, whenever I found you online and actually talked to you, it, dude, it did it did wonders for me because I had nobody to talk to. And once I finally had somebody to talk to, I got a lot of stuff off my chest, and we can play ideas off of each other. And what do you think about this? Well, I've seen this. Well, I haven't. You know, and really have somebody to talk to. And... I've basically stuck my neck out there because I was pretty respected within the religious community, you know, operating as an evangelist since 2004 with my music and everything. And then we start talking about some of these things, and then I'm demonized like crazy. Like, like they don't, you know, they they think I'm a, a witch and all kind of crazy stuff. But I'm still a firm believer in the Bible, in, in God, and I, I practice it with my family and teaching integrity and you know, I let my yes be yes and my no be no, but you really see see it like the Salem witch trials, man. And uh, anything different, they demonize what they don't understand. I've put my neck out there, and I thank you for doing that too, because I know you was a little hesitant to come on and everything, but I'm really glad you ended up calling in, man. You're very well-spoken, and the show went great, and a lot of people's going to hear it. So thanks so much for calling in. You know, that's, that's really to both of you guys as well, you know. Well, thank you. Um, oh, as a sidebar... I didn't know you talked to Jordan Maxwell. I, I, he's one of my idols. I love. Mm-hmm. He is so smart and so yeah. well read, and I have learned so much from that man. It's just mm-hmm. a shame that you know he's, he's he's basically living in squalor. But yeah. you know, but but you know we all have our our roads. We have our these are, these are our um, our agendas. You know, this is what we're here yeah. for to do certain things. And that was uh, Maxwell's, you know, job was to educate us, you know. Yeah. And so when he passes, he did his job. He basically enlightened us in some yeah. fashion. And I think we're all here to, to to fill roles and to do things. We have we have projects, and and that's what we're here for. And we're here to learn too, you know that. And mm-hmm. it is fun. I mean, even though. Yeah, it's interesting uh, to say the least. It, it, but, but we are, you know, once we realize that we are indeed slaves, and your eyes are open to that reality, it's like, well, you know, great, we're slaves, but finally that, you know, again, that phrase, the veil has been lifted, well, finally, you know, and then you can you can learn from that and, um, and, and go from there. And I don't even go into reincarnation. That's a whole other topic we'll talk about mm-hmm. later. <laughs> and then close yeah. so you got to get going. I enjoyed this evening, and I appreciate your time. Me too, man. I appreciate it. No problem, man. Every Wednesday, man, we're going to try to keep it up and get new guests in. And if you guys have anybody you guys want to refer, you know, even the listeners, contact me through Facebook. Let me know who you guys want to hear on the show. We'll talk to them. We've got some amazing shows lined up, people who have influenced me. And, um, you know, one thing I want to say about George Maxwell, I just got an update today. He's actually uh, getting his, his talk show back up and going. So if you type, go to YouTube or Google and type in uh, the Jordan Maxwell show, he's getting his show lined up. So he's going to be doing a podcast as well. But, yeah, I, you know, I was talking to him for a while, and he's the reason that I really decided, you know, to put my music back out because there was a point where I wasn't going to do it. And, you know, he just, you know, I just just after talking to him, him just encouraging me, you know, and, and I'm trying to do the same thing for him to really encourage him because, you know, we all need it. And, you know, if anybody's demonized and if anybody's, 
you know, talked about, and you know, we think we have it hard. That guy, man, they've they've stolen his work and plagiarized it and made movies out of it, and he hasn't seen a dime, you know. So he's definitely been down through there, but he's a huge inspiration with all the influence that he has, you know. I agree. Yeah. Jordan Max was pretty awesome, man. I've watched a lot of his stuff since I met you, and uh, I was blown mm-hmm. away by his stuff, you know. So, yeah. Kudos well, to Jordan, it's- man. And, you know, the thing is, with the information we're dealing with, it is esoteric. It is out there. It does seem crazy. You see UFOs fighting in the sky. You know, you're seeing spirits fly up. It sounds crazy. The thing about it, if it doesn't resonate with you, fine. Keep moving. I mean, yeah, you're going to laugh about it because you think it's it's kooky. But for those it resonates with, for those who need somebody to talk to, for those who are looking for answers in this particular area, it moves them deep down to their core and they're like, man, this is what I've been... You don't... I mean, I'm telling you, all the, the the inbox messages I get, people saying that, like, the research and the information and stuff I talk about is changing their life, my music and things like that, man, it's it's so worth it, you know, putting my neck out there and receiving the bad because the good totally outweighs the bad, man. Mm-hmm. Awesome, well, you're doing man. the right thing, and you know that. You know that, too. And mm-hmm. you're here for a reason, and, and it feels good, too, you know? Yeah. It's... Your, your higher self knows that you're doing the right thing and you're searching. Just keep searching. And uh, when your time is, is you know, here to, to pass over, you know you've done your job. Mm-hmm. Well, that's about it for tonight, man. Thanks for everybody joining us in the chat room, everybody from Facebook checking it out, everybody on YouTube. Please feel free to share this on YouTube and on Facebook, man, and get the word out there and join us again next week. I believe we'll be talking to author Bill Bean, who has had a lot of experience dealing with unseen forces and demons and angels and UFOs and all this type of stuff. He's got footage. He's got pictures and some amazing stuff. So you guys go ahead and do your research on him. Bill Bean, he's got tons of pictures of UFOs and entities in his house dealing with him when he was a child. And they're actually going to be making a movie based on his life. So join us next week. We'll be back at 9 p.m. Central next week. So I want to say shalom and good night to everybody. All right. Take it easy, Eric. Take it easy, Derek. Hey, All right. Take peace, care. brothers. All right, now. All right. If you want to support the show, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. With over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, you can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial by using any computer to go to audibletrial.com slash TMP.